jo nākamā priekšlasījuma nosaukums Zīmolvedība un investīciju piesaistas stratēģijas. Aicinu skatu Žuzē Filipu Torresu, stratēģija konsultanta no Spānijas. Mr. Torres, you are welcome to the stage. Thank you. So, I'll time it to 20 minutes. First of all, happy birthday. And second of all, congratulations. Happy birthday on your 20th anniversary, and congratulations on what you have achieved so far. Uh, my experience with LIA has been fantastic. Uh, I think, uh, and I work with many countries around the world, from Poland, Brazil, Spain, around the world. Uh, I work on the topics of country branding, nation branding, uh, strategies for foreign direct investment and tourism. Um, and I rarely came across of such a, an investment promotion agency um, that surprised me so much in a positive way. And that's thanks to the team that I've worked with and thanks to what I've seen all over the world. So congratulations for that. Um, and congratulations, Latvia. Um, in my opinion, Latvia uh, recently is really getting uh, a strong protagonism in terms of nation branding. Um, it has shown results. It's seen there. It's in the economic press, and people are talking about it. Either if you feel it in your day-to-day -day or not, that's something different. But I'm talking about what is the perception internationally. So Latvia has currently a good perception in terms of image, in terms of country branding. And I think that uh, Latvia should start working on its country branding in a different way. Uh, I've created this presentation, especially for Latvia, and, and this presentation is not about Latvia, but it's for Latvia. And it talks about the issues of nation branding and, and how to treat and how to work on country branding. Because you see, 90% um, of country brand strategies fail. They fail, and they fail miserably. And the reason for that is that um, most of the times, countries don't ask themselves why do they need a country brand, why do they need a nation brand, and why they should manage that nation brand. And, and there's one single answer that, needs, that addresses this, which is nation brand is not about emotions, it's not just about perceptions, it's about an economic, tangible asset. Well, sometimes people say intangible, but I'll try to demonstrate that it's kind of tangible. So country branding is to bring economic growth for the country and, as a consequence, of course, social uh, uh, growth as well. You see, when we talk about country branding, and the examples I'm going to give about country branding is, and this presentation is, is about what countries have been doing wrong and why they, they have not succeeded, and the things that countries try to do because they think that's what it needs to be done in terms of country branding, which I don't understand Latin, but I think the previous presentation was talking about the Latvia as a brand. So, you see, uh, country branding has an economic value. For instance, when I say Spain, uh, imagine you are an investor, and when I say Spain, you probably think of the famous word of siesta, right? Like, in Spain, everybody sleeps, nobody works. By the way, I'm not Spanish, so you can criticize it anyways. So, but the, that's the perception about, country, about the country. And if you are an investor and you're comparing, like, Spain against Finland, which one is more productive? Mm, well, you know, I would put my bucks into Finland. However, if you look into the numbers and if you look into the, um, the, the, the labor productivity rate, Spain has a higher labor productivity rate than Finland. Who would say that? But there you go. You are, you are applying preconceived ideas about a specific country, and that is actually taking investment away just because of perceptions. It's not about reality. People don't care about reality. Investors are really strongly influenced by that. I'm going to give you another example. Imagine I am here 10 years ago, half the age of Leah. There was no social networks, no nothing. And I come across and I say, I need 1,000 euros. 1,000 euros, I'm not talking about lots, I'm already preparing for the new speech for Latvia in the future, which will be in euros. So I have 1,000 euros. And I know a guy. He's not, his name is Mark Zuckerberg. He's going to launch a social network. He's going to rock the world. You can have 50% of that network, of that social network. Do you want to invest? And you probably go like, well, yeah, it's from Silicon Valley, interesting, cool, etc. Now imagine I say exactly the same story. I say, I know a guy. He wants to start a social network, and his name is Abdul Al-Mahal. Probably you would not invest. And again, maybe the company is better, but it was just about your perceptions that you had about the country where it came from. So, you see, country branding is very interesting, and it has a long way. But country branding originally uh, came 
uh, as a consequence uh, from the past, where countries needed to defend their territory. People like country branding in the past was like, this is mine, you know, don't come in, look at this flag, you're going to die if you cross the border, you know? That, that was what country branding was all about. It's like, don't come, like, don't come, this is it, this is the berries and so on. However, with recent developments, you can start to see the open market, economic trade. <laughs> Countries really want to start cooperating together and to be friends, as you see in this image. So there is like a lot of economic treaties, there's a lot of collaboration, and, and the world is flat in that sense, not just in investment and trade, but also in tourism, such as low cost, for instance, low cost tourism, uh, affordable traveling. I mean, who would say that you can travel for 10 euros? So these things have shown to countries that at their territory, that at their territory sorry, is actually a tangible asset and you can actually work with it. The difference is that you cannot move it. It's not like a product. You have to bring your product, you have to bring your consumers to the product. So everything started in country branding. And when we talk, it really started in Europe. That's, you know, when civilization started to be documented, everything started to be written, and um, in... 50 years ago, 60 years ago, 100 years ago, if you want, it was really where the intellect was. I mean, it was really where the innovators were. Uh, it was really after the Industrial Revolution when things started to start, uh, when things started to show up. It was really where uh, culture was booming. It was, you know, things were done in a way that the world really had their focus on. And, and then this came, out, um, this came along, which was the Second World War. And with the Second World War, uh, what started to happen was that this intellect, this talent, started to move to other countries, specifically to the U.S., and that's why the U.S. is such a strong brand as it is today, because of the exodus of European intellect. But I'm not talking about uh, Europe for now, uh, for the U.S. for now. So this thing about the war and the thing about Germany, imagine 50 or 60 years ago when we talked about Germany, it was like such a bad reputation, and you look at this and you see this like made in Germany, and every product and every brand that you see this tag on, it really gives a value added to the product. But this was not how it started. 50 years ago, this was invented by the British people, by the British government, to brand the, pro the, 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 the German products so that whenever an English person would see it, would not buy it. <laughs> it was completely different. But the, 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 the work, the way the Germans work, the, work the, the, the quality of the products, the brands really reverted this. And today, so the brands really built the reputation of the country. So that was the way they was done. But now this today has goodwill, but in the past had bad will. And when you talk about brands, and, and you, know, you can ask yourself, so for instance, Latvia, can we start telling you know, our entrepreneurs, business leaders and so on, to represent the brand of the country in their activities and so long. I mean, can we brand Latvia through their commercial brands? Well, let, I'm going to give you some examples, like Coco Chanel, an example for France, an example for, for fashion, something that really helped to brand France. I mean, this, this, this has many, many years before it was really well known. Or Louis Vuitton, look at the heritage it has in terms of time. So these brands that you know today and really brand uh, the country, I mean, they have more than 100 years, and, and these are brands that really take time to build. And they did not have this in mind. They did not have, let's brand France. It was a consequence. Yeah. So, nevertheless, if you start a cosmetics company, in terms of fashion and, and well-being, I would probably brand it in France, because, you know, the France brand gives me goodwill. So, I mean, when you ask about this, can Latvia do it? In, in my opinion, I think it's extremely difficult. Maybe you can have some flagship brands, but I think it's extremely difficult. Because companies, it's a new world, it's a completely different thing. Companies have their own objectives, their own headaches, their own market. And sometimes they don't want to say where they're from, they want to say they're international. And they have their own strategy. There's some exceptions, I'll give this example, Qatar. Qatar is really a great flagship brand. Even before you, I mean, Qatar did not exist 10 years ago in our heads, in our minds. And thanks to Qatar Airways, whenever you look at the brand, you just get the notion of what the brand of the country is, and you really like it, and you have not, not even been there. So if you want to start an airline, please go ahead, <laughs> you know, and a global airline like Qatar Airways, which already have our Air Baltic, but if you want to go this way, okay, but I, th I think it's not advisable because it's extremely uh, difficult. The other way that you can do and countries think about is we can brand it through our politicians. We can brand it through our, our leaders. And, well, you can only brand the country if you really have, 
if you are the protagonist of a continent, like Merkel, or you know, if you are controversial, or if you are crazy. You know, that's you know, you decide what it is. But but either way, this is how you run the country. So. Mr. President, Minister of Economy, if you don't want to start shooting and walking around like this and riding horses, I don't think it's really advisable. Um, so this is not really some, like the, 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 the bill, the pressure should not be always on the political leaders. They are just the CEO or the president like, of any company and they should represent what is the brand, but they should not beat the brand. Yeah. The other way that companies, uh, sorry, countries think about is it's about, it's about this. Look, you look at this image, you look at the yellow cabs, and you go like, how many times, even before you went to New York, you go and say, I know this. And when you go to New York, you go like, I've been here, but I've never been here. Why is that? Well, this was a very well-orchestrated strategy from the US, where it was kind of a product placement. Every movie was actually to transmit the lifestyle of the US. And, and you see that people like, enjoy and know about the US, even without being there. So, can you do it? Can, can Latvia, for instance, do this case? Well, it is admittable already, like for instance, that Woody Allen is actually doing these kind of things in their own movies, like Nicky Vicky with Christina Barcelona, uh, Rome with Love, uh, London, well, I don't know. <laughs> All the types have always a city on it, and it's always about the city, and the city pays for Woody Allen to shoot the movies there. However, this is already very, 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 I would say, um, taken. A lot, this is not new anymore, and it costs a lot of money. And so what countries try to do is, okay, let's try another thing. So let's, let's make the Olympics. The Olympics is really going to brand my country. And now it's going on in Madrid, Istanbul, and, and, and Tokyo, and they think like, oh, it's going to help the brand of the image of the country, and it's really going to position, and everybody runs about it. But it's always very controversial because you can never demonstrate, with very few exceptions, that actually you can brand the country with that, with the Olympics, and actually bring it brings income or revenues to the country because the bill is so high. Okay, I challenge you. Where is this? Any volunteers? No? Yeah? No? Yeah. So China, so yeah. this is South Africa. Look at the money they spent on their World Cup in terms of the, 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 the football cup. It was on the center, it was an enormous bill. It didn't bring many tour, more tourists, 300,000 tourists, and they talk about the brand. Yeah, but if you, the brand does not mean anything on a tangible way, this is going to fade. Okay, let's talk about the Olympics. Where is this? This is London. So, again, <laughs> did it really brand? Did it, is, is it really worth to spend that money and to really make it and, ma and as a consequence bring it on? I don't believe so, with few exceptions. If you do it well, it can really brand. And here's a great example of a city that really did it well. Barcelona, 1992. And, and the world saw what the country, what this city was, and, and everybody wanted to look at this, how integrated the strategy with the city is. And, and you look at that and you say, I want to go there. And look, Barcelona in 1992 was not famous. They had a very strong structural problem. They had negative growth, they had unemployment, they had crime. And this is a great example of how you can actually brand through the Olympics. But you have to do it with a strategy and something in sight. Again, where do you want to go? Here or here? I want to go here. So the thing is, what really brands and what really pushes the brand of a country is the press. The press builds it all. So when a country, and I was talking about Spain, look at that. How much is this worth to be on the cover of a global magazine? And it normally has to be on the global and economic magazine. But, you know, it's, it's not forever, because the way, same way it builds, it destroys. So you cannot rely on, oh, we have to be on the press, and we have to be on the press, and we want to be there, because you won't be news unless you have a strong economic uh, performance or a decrease. And, and you can say, is this important? Look at that. This is how, according to the Economist Intelligence Unit, how investors, both corporate, and, and private assess their risk. And if they ask if the international press is an influencer on the time of investment. And look at that, look at the result, yes. So what they read in the press tells them, I'm not gonna put there, I'm not gonna go put there. However, the press is creating things like this, like the pigs. This is a, an attack of the sovereignty of these countries, so much that now they call it GIPS. But it was made on, 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 on purpose. So, 
But you, it's very difficult for countries to be always here, and you have to constantly be here and be talked about and etc. Why? Because this is Anglo-Saxon news, with the exception of this one. It's English mentality, it's American mentality, it's about money. So it's going to be very difficult to be here. So what countries normally do is the common mistake. Let's pay to be there. And the pay is, let's start building the logos, which, in my opinion, don't work for absolutely anything when I talk about countries. Don't believe me? Take a second. Okay, which logo is missing? There you go. So it doesn't work. I mean, what's the logo of Italy? And nobody knows, but everybody associates Italy with something. So that's what is the brand. And then comes the other thing, and this is my favorite absolute thing, which is the taglines. When we talk about the taglines of the advertising uh, complementary to the logo, where is this? Nobody knows. This is Taiwan. <laughs> okay, wait, wait, wait. Here we go. Now, the heart of Central Asia. Yeah? Where is this? Well, Uzbekistan. I heard Uzbekistan today. That's, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. Okay, let's carry on. So, where is this? <laughs> right, eh? Sri Lanka is like, really? Oh, land like no other? Okay, I can imagine like the presentation explaining, no, the tagline is going to position ourselves because we are this and so on. Like, the get natural, where? I mean, come on, you know? And so on. But my favorite one is this one. You ready? Okay, so this is a real tagline from a real country going on today. Okay, ready? The place to be now? Here we go, Tunisia, where there's a war conflict. All right, so I don't want to be there. So, so th this is really like, it's not because of this that you're going to brand the country. And the, the, what happens is that most of the times the attention goes here. And everybody debates about, oh, our logo is like, I'm very sorry for the word I'm going to use, but fuck the logo. <laughs> okay, so it it's, does not make it or break it. It's not the tagline that is going to make it. Be and, and people talk about it. And when you launch it, there's a controversy. Oh, no, we don't represent that. Oh, we're something different. And then comes an advertising agency that wants to change everything and so on and spend millions. It's not it. It's not it. I'm going to talk to you about a great example. A great example that you don't need a logo to be branded. And a great example of how the world is today and what is the opportunity for countries around the world, regardless of their size, regardless of their budget, regardless of what they are, that they can actually be global. And they can actually be global brands. I don't know if you are aware of this, but anyways. So, Cecilia Jimenez was an old lady that decided to restore this uh, last century fresco that was the original here. And she just went to this church, and this is in the north of Spain, in, in, in Saragossa. It's called Borja, that's the, the region. And she just said, poor Christ, let's just <laughs> restore it a little bit. So with her own ink and her own drawing, she started to do this. And, and, and immediately, like everybody saw, what the hell are you doing? So this is Cecilia Jimenez. And everyone, the press was like, you're crazy. The mayor was like, I'm going to lose my government. Oh my God, what this is this? And you see the painting on the back, and she says, I'm so sorry about this. My God, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And this started to get such protagonism, such protagonism. This is a population of 5,000. That this was in the Guardian, in Financial Times. I'm not sure if it was an economist, but I'm pretty sure. It was in all the talk shows in the US. It was all over the world, all over the world. And, and there was people even making impressions of this, you know? Like, look at that, people voluntarily doing impressions of this. Or, or this, like Clint, like E.T., e come on, you know? E and even her, I mean, this is the best, it's her, right there, you know? Or, or this, this is my absolute favorite, you know? Like, and it was volunteer. I mean, this is a population of 5,000. She has more fans, uh, three times more fans than her own city. <laughs> right now. She didn't do anything. She was entering a depression because she thought she was going to jail. Now, the interesting thing is that people are already interpreting this in a different way, like the revolution about the church and interpretations of her own interpretation, right? Like the youth representing. And, and the fun thing is that even a Wikipedia, I mean, oh my God, this, this was... The thing is, a product, people start to do products. This is, you can buy this, you know, there's shirts. Now she's fine, fighting for copyrights. <laughs> And she's making agreement with some other. So this is a great story. And, and the thing is, an old church in an old town has more visits than the Mona Lisa. <laughs> Almost. This is an exaggeration. But you know what's interesting about this picture? Is that this church is actually rich in terms of culture and in image. Look at that. You have this. Look at this. Nobody is looking at any of this. It's just 
her, you know, just that. So, so you can see that this is an example of how a city actually branded itself. And this is thanks to new media, this is thanks to new ways. Like 86% of tourists, 86% of tourists consult the internet before they, they choose their destination. And 63%, the first center of, 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 the, of search is the, the search engine. 63% of tourists enter in Google directly or Bing or other search engines and they type in like, where can I go? 63%, <laughs> more than half of the entire tourism industry. And, and, and not just for leisure, but also for, for investment, you can see the same thing. Now, I'm going to give you some figures, some interesting figures. Currently, every year, there are 551 million searches about tourism worldwide. One search equals one and a half tourists. And one search produces 1,700 euros for tourism. The US is number one searched, France is number two. For investment, of course, there's less, but there's 57 million searches performed by investors or business leaders interested in specific countries around the world. And one search, this of course is more, is 24,000 euros. The US number one and of course China number two. Latvia is 250,000 searches for investment. There's 250,000 searches for Latvia. There are people that are interested in doing business with Latvia overseas, like internationally, not in Latvia. So, like from outside, to about Latvia, 250,000 searches. And one search produces 4,700 euros in total. So this is the world average, but this is a good result of it should be a little bit less because one search means you're being very popular. So this is the way to go. This is the way to go. And this works for investment as well, because you see, it says like, how do you determine risk level? Again, the same study of The Economist. You can say this like risk profile online or others. When we talk about, oh yes, we have to talk about the GDP and the number, nah, nah, they just Google their stuff before they invest. That's what they do. They just do it over their phone and say, investments in Latvia, whatever. And then they go in the deeper level, but that's their point of entry. What a great opportunity. So we measure all this. We have the Bloom Consulting Country Rand Ranking. This is 2012. This month is going to be 2013. Um, there was three words I understood in the past conferences. was my name, was Latvia, was Leah, and the name of my competitor. So this is also a ranking that competes with, with that one. This one is published in, in CNN, and this year is going to be ready. I don't have yet the results for Latvia, so I'm not publishing it, but it will be very soon, so I'll send to all of you if you want. So my recommendation to Latvia is, if you want to brand and to really start working on a country brand project, really focus on this. Your country is not one brand. Don't try to brand the country as a whole because it will not work. And I've seen that all over the world. It's not just me saying. You cannot brand your country for investors and for tourists at the same time because the tourist wants to hear about fun. If you talk about fun to an investor, he will never put the money in. And vice versa, if you're going to talk about investment to a tourist, he says, I don't want to work anymore. So, you cannot brand just as an overall. And when I say brand is not the logo, the logo can be the same for three, but you need three different strategies. And you need to treat them separately. The second thing is, look, why do you want to be on the cover of The Economist? Maybe you want to be on the cover of 10 geographies, three geographies that are really strategic for you. Maybe China is not the country, I don't know. Maybe the US is not the country, I don't know. Is it the region, is it the Baltics, I don't know. But focus on specific geographies. Don't try to create a global brand all over the world. Digital, don't spend one dime in classic advertising. You've seen it. I mean, you want brands? Okay, not talk about brands that did it without advertising as well. Google, Twitter, Facebook, one, zero, zero in advertising. And look at the global brands, how they are. Measure it financially and measure it with a GDP. If you develop a country brand strategy, the measurement system should not just be perceptions. I'll explain why. Because you start a country brand project, a nation brand project. And when you start it, you say, everybody's super happy. You need a budget to do it. Of course you need a budget to do it. Everybody's excited. You launch it. You come outside. Hey, we're going to do it. Great. The perception is going to be great. In three years, there's going to be a journalist who's going to say, where did that money go? Oh, to improve the perceptions. Show me the results. Because we have people that don't have employment. We have people that are starving. We have schools that need reconstruction. Why are you spending that money on a beauty uh, contest? And you say, look, we've improved perceptions. <laughs> it's like, so what? 
where did the money go? And more and more, the world is going to a governance. So treat your country brand as an asset and measure it financially. And the second thing is, don't think about a 30-year plan. I don't know where the world's going to be in 30 years. The objectives need to be shown now. They need to be shown on your day-to-day, -day, and they need to have short-term objectives to go to a broader uh, goal. You can have a 30, but you need to have a five. And this five is this impact. And you can do it, and you can measure it. So, Papia, if you do it, choose the size you want to be. You're still on time. Thank you very much. <laughs>